Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the RP Drugs Limited Q1 FI23 Earnings Conference Call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements by the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involves risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Adish Patil, CFO at RT Drugs Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today to discuss our financial results for the quarter ended June 30th, 2022. The company's performance, Q1 FY23, was impacted due to the challenging business environment in terms of constant depreciation in the domestic currency, leading to provision of notional forex losses, lockdowns in China affecting purchase decisions in uncertain scenario, fear of recession in key geographies driven by ongoing geopolitical conflict and continuous upward momentum in crude, coal and other raw material input costs. I will now quickly take you through segment-wise performance and then I will delve more into impact of rising input costs, the overall demand scenario and the company's strategy to counter the ongoing difficulties. First, we'll take up standalone business performance. Standalone revenues for one FI23 stood at rupees 551.4 crores as against rupees 507.4 crores, a growth of 9% year on year. Standalone business contributed approximately 86% to the consolidated revenue. Approximately 64% of the standalone revenues came from the domestic market, while the remaining 36% came from the exports market for Q1 FY23. Domestic revenue grew approximately by 3%, while exports grew by around 23% year on year. Within the API segment, the antibiotic therapeutic category contributed around 46%, anti diabetic around 13%, anti protozoal around 19%, anti inflammatory around 10%, anti fungal around 9%, and the rest contributed around 4% to total API sales. For the quarter, revenue from operations for specialty chemicals and intermediates stood at rupees 56.8 crores, which grew 21% on year on year basis. Now we will discuss formulation segment performance. For the quarter, revenue for formulation stood at rupees 85 crores as against 86.5 crores year on year basis. Formulation segment contributed approximately 14% to the consolidated revenue for the quarter, approximately 50% of the revenue came from exports during the quarter. Exports continues to be the key focus area for formation segment, and so far, we are able to achieve the targets. Now, coming to the consolidated results, as mentioned, earlier the company reported a revenue growth of 7%, which was mainly driven by higher realizations in antibiotics, anti-diabetics, protozoals, and specialty chemicals. Demand in API business witnessed lower than anticipated traction as the offtake by the customers remained lower on the account of inventory recalibration at the customer's level due to high API prices. Margin and profitability continued to remain affected as sustained inflationary pressure impacted raw material cost, crude, power, and coal cost coupled with sharp depreciation in the currency. This impact is likely to extend to some part of Q2 FY23 as well. Just to give you some perspective, there is an impact of approximately 4 crores due to forex movement and rupees 8 crores due to rate only rate increase in power and coal cost. The company has undertaken multiple price hikes since the beginning of FY23 and as a result, 
the company witnessed the highest ever realizations for most of its product in Q1 FY23 when compared to previous four quarters. Domestic demand for the antibiotic therapeutic category was slightly weaker for Q1 FY23. In the wake of series of sharp price hikes across almost all our products, the demand was subdued for the quarter for the same reason. The company expects normalized margin levels once the input price volatility stabilizes, which is expected from second half of FY23 onwards. We are already witnessing softening in some of the raw materials and some other input costs, although they are still much higher than long-term averages. Debt to equity ratio has marginally reduced to 0.51 by the end of Q1 FY23 in spite of carrying heavier inventories. Thus, there is scope to further improve on net operating working capital. Now coming to the company's ongoing capex, the company incurred a capex of rupees 35 crores during the quarter and planning to invest around 250 to 350 crores for the entire FY23. The civil construction activity for Gujarat capex remains well on track. However, heavy monsoons have slowed down the pace temporarily. Tarapur specialty chemicals brownfield capacity for which we had taken scale-up batches in the last quarter has now been ramped up and the optimization process is ongoing at the plant level. The company expects a meaningful contribution from this facility from second half of FY23 onwards. For Tarapur Greenfield API facility, boiler and zero liquid discharge treatment plants have been operationalized from May 2022 and commissioning of the main plant is expected by the end of FY23. We firmly believe that most of the headwinds are transient in nature rather than structural and hopefully it will improve soon. Our company remains confident of overcoming the challenges and remains optimistic on the opportunities for all the segments in the upcoming years driven by the ongoing cap project capex downfield expansions and higher utilization of existing capacities. With this, we can now begin the question and answer session. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touch tone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rupesh Tatia from Intel Sense Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yes, I can okay. So my first uh, question is, yeah, my first question is in specialty chemicals, sir, what, what is the capex amount uh, we have spent and what is the revenue potential? So uh, uh, approximately, you can say half of the uh, budget, uh, what we have planned uh, in that 500 crore capex plan is uh, will be going for specialty. And typically overall, on an overall basis, uh, the asset turn is sub somewhere around 2 to 2.5 for the so, so, so we, we in F, I mean, currently we are doing commercial sampling batches, right? How much is that capex? This 250 crore is a medium term. Couple call can of Australia, ATL number. No. Hello. I think. Hello. Can you repeat the question? So this 250 crore you are saying for specialty chemical, this is already spent or this is a medium term plan? No, no, uh, that, that is the ongoing capex okay. which is happening in terms of greenfield project. So it will take uh, a, around a year to finish. Yeah, but currently we are doing some sampling batches, right, in, in specialty chemicals? 
Yes, yes, that is the brownfield expansion that we have carried out in the Tarapur facility. So, how much is the amount, sir, for that one? So, that is a brownfield. Um, so, so approximately, we don't give out the capex number, but then uh, it is much lower. But very roughly around you know 90 to 100 crores revenue potential is what we expect from that facility at the uh, full scale level. Okay, okay, and and specialty chemical has a better gross margin, maybe the margin. Is, is is that a fair understanding, sir? Yes, yes, that is true. Okay, okay, okay. Then my my second question, sir, is uh, I was going through your annual report. You have done thirty nine thousand uh, metric ton production, and our capacity is forty nine thousand uh, metric ton roughly in FY twenty two. What what can we expect by FY twenty three exit? Both uh, both these numbers, production and capacity. Production numbers. Uh... Definitely, some brownfield expansions will add up sooner. And yeah, uh, if our target date for the greenfield expansion of Tarakur facility completes, then, uh, this number will be much higher. Right now, we, since because we have not disclosed the num uh, the product name and the capacity for the greenfield project, that is why we, we cannot answer it right now. But then, uh, it's an import substitute product, and the capacity will be quite huge, quite huge by the end of FY23. So it, 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 it will be at least sir, 80,000 above? From, from currently roughly 49, 50,000, would it be at least 80,000 and above, sir? Ballpark? Hello? Hello. I think yes, it would be more than eighty thousand. Hello. Uh, two three projects come comes into commercial production. Okay, okay. Then my another another observation, sir, from annual report was your R and D expenses were you know only seven crore, although the the, the detail on R and D projects was quite extensive. What we see in other API companies uh, is sorry, that R and D spend is you know like three four percent of the revenue. So so why this number is so low, or is, is is there some you know different way in which we are doing accounting and you know other companies are doing accounting? Because on, on a twenty five hundred crore revenue, seven crore number looks really low. RDC is offline, is it? Operator? L ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Adish, can you hear us? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the management line is disconnected. Uh, please stay on hold. We'll quickly get him back. All right, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the management line is reconnected. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hello, hello, sir. Uh, do, do you want me to repeat my question? Yeah, please. Hello. Okay. Yes, please, please. Sir, my question is I was going through annual report. 
Yeah, I was going to annual report. The R&D spend number was seven crore for a revenue base of you know twenty five hundred crore roughly. The R&D spend number of seven crore looks really low. When we look at other API companies, the R&D spend is you know in the range of three to four percent roughly. So is 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 there some you know accounting difference? We are accounting it differently. The other companies are accounting it differently. That is my question. Yeah, probably uh, to some extent that can be the case because what happens is sometimes uh, we have to take trial batches at the plant scale also, you know. Uh, so which is a part of R and D, but then we expense it out and we don't uh, means uh, you know consider means uh, label it as R and D. So probably that is why it is looking low. And the mainly our R and D is into process uh, process development, our uh, process development and process improvement. Of the existing products, so that is why I think uh, the number looks low. Okay, okay, and and then my final question, sir, is uh, in in med farming we were I think roughly around eleven hundred tons per month capacity. What is the current capacity as of quarter one exit? Can you just give me the number? As as of as of now, uh, we have reached twelve hundred tons per month. That can be achieved. And, and and this is supposed to go to 2,000 tons per month by then. Yeah, so so um, it might take you know a year, um, uh, around uh, 12 to 18 months time to achieve that number probably. Okay, and what what, what is the capacity utilization right now of of metforming? Yeah, because so the last year uh, we did uh, roughly. You can say uh, two thirds means in somewhere in mid sixties or something like that. Okay, okay. Thank no, you, sir. No. I'll, I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Ajas Lakhani from Unifi Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for taking our question. Uh, in the press release, uh, you mentioned that uh, we've had the highest ever realizations for several API pro uh, products in uh, Q1 FI 23. But despite the fact uh, the EBITDA margin has been the lowest over the last uh, three years. Uh, so does that mean the cost pressures were uh, far higher than the uh, realization? And, um, and, and could you comment? So some of it you have already mentioned that some cost pressures are easing out, but what about the realizations? Would realizations sustain at current levels? Yeah, so so the thing is, uh, the reason for taking all these price hikes was because the input cost had escalated quite sharply uh, in the beginning of this calendar year for multiple reasons which are highlighted. And then uh, we started taking price hikes, you know, but there is always a lag in taking price hikes uh, because of which uh, definitely the margins, gross margins were squeezed in last quarter. Uh, but what we could see, the pending orders uh, are even higher than what realizations we achieved in June quarter, you know. So probably that will help in the beginning of this uh, Q2. And now the now that the, uh, you know, little bit easing is there in, in some areas, not everywhere, in some areas, uh, hopefully the situation should improve. And the thing is, uh, this, you know, the, this time for EBITDA margins, there had, there had been pressure on two, I mean, you know, two sides. One was gross contribution uh, margin, and other was even at the manufacturing overhead side because of this coal and there was a lot of uh, rate variance and increase in the manufacturing cost, which also needs to be taken care ideally by the further enhancement in the gross contributions. Okay, and so uh, is it fair to assume this is the, uh, uh, I mean, this is sort of a, a bottom that we have hit and from now on, uh, beta margins can only improve? Yeah, yeah, we definitely feel so. Okay, and in terms of uh, volumes, uh, would you would you take a call of uh, rash, I mean, uh, reducing some prices so that your volumes are back on track or you would want to have the current prices and then uh, and then work with new partners to increase the volumes. 
yeah so it was very really challenging uh, so to pass on the margins uh, so to, to maintain the margin and to pass on the increase input cost we had to take very sharp price hikes and when that thing happens so quickly you know they definitely there is a hit on demand side because if the at the customer side if the inventories are not at critically low levels they will refrain from making a purchase decision so that def- that impact definitely we have seen in majorly in the domestic market so hopefully right now uh, see we don't want to uh, make any variable losses but uh, as far as we are not making any variable losses for uh, incremental production i think we should go for it means more than margins we should try to focus on the absolute ebitda numbers in short term that is got it just one uh, one more question uh, mr patel hi ages here uh, so i wanted to uh, ask you that you mentioned the inventory recalibration and you know the demand uh, which was subdued so uh, can you speak a little bit about customer and uh, inventory levels today is that normalized and should we start to see volume upticks in second quarter or you know there is still inventory left at their end um i think our director mr harit shah would be better able to answer this question i think there is still uh, uh, in many of many of the products uh, we see demand picking up again but uh, still it is not at the uh, like pre covid levels uh, you know like about two years back and what has happened also is that the, during covid period there was uh, uh, growth rate was very high and uh, all companies have budgeted high growth rate for this quarter also so the inventory was very high at the beginning of the year because last quarter they produce more of finished formulation and that is what the, and all the stocks levels at distributor and super stock is level were very high uh, but we expect now this quarter at least we started seeing some improvement uh, from july yeah got it answer uh, for all the increase in cost is the present price hike adequate to maintain our levels of gross margins or is the price hike still needed uh, now the uh, raw material prices started softening uh, basically all basic chemical prices went up like for caustic flakes sulfuric all sulfur based chemistry due to crude oil solvent prices you know they have started correcting now due to overall uh, degrowth in textile in pharma last quarter so that uh, so we feel this they this quarter there should be definitely improvement in the gross margin yeah got it and sir uh, what is the debt today because we are expecting to say uh, take some incremental debt in the current year for the 250 to 350 crores of capex right yes so as of today uh, the total debt figure on a consolidated basis is around 541 crores out of okay. which around 187 is long term and rest is uh, short term for working capital got it and sir so this number is likely to go up by about say 150 crores during the course of the year is that understanding correct uh yes probably uh, it should but then uh, with the increase uh, so so what we were expecting uh, at the peak uh, rate to equity can go around 0.7 or something 0.7 0.7 to 0.78 and then again from there it should start coming down uh, with each quarter because of the additional profits so could you quantify that in in as a as a number of the debt instead of the 0.7 uh, you know is 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 the is the number uh, at peak 700 yeah right right now okay debt number you mean uh debt number yes so we were in by the end of it say around 50% of it is roughly it is very rough calculation around 50% of our uh, this thing will be funded through uh, term term debt and uh, at the same side there will be some repayments also around 30 crores per annum 30 to 40 crores per annum every year so that so around so, yeah you can say yeah, around so 1, 150 about 130, something like yeah that. 130 crores incremental from here so 545 crores is what we are at so we should peak out at 700 and then start to taper down right okay got it sir okay.
Okay. Thanks, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Bobby Jeraman from Falcon. Please go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, hello. Uh, what is the bit uh, concerning about your business model is that you don't have any control over your data margin. Uh, the kind of reasons you're giving on INR depreciation and input cost inflation and all that, that's going to happen in some form or the other all the time, right? Uh, that's out of your control. Uh, but it seems that when you raise prices, it is demand. So given this, how are you planning for so much capital expenditure when you don't know what your level of profits is going to be because you don't have control of your margin? Yeah. So the thing is, uh, uh, one thing is for sure, because we have been doing this business since last 30 years, what we have realized is that the kind of product uh, profile we have and the kind of efficiencies we have our competitors and the back level of backward integration, uh, 15 to 16% EBITDA margin is fairly easy. It means it is not something uh, very, very optimistic. So th de definitely this, uh, this uh, you can say scenario, it's transitory in, na in nature and it won't sustain for long. So we know that it will revert back. But with this, uh, if we stop doing CapEx, you know, uh, that will definitely impact our growth in third and fourth year. And uh, as far as uh, this INR depreciation uh, I was talking about, because it has happened suddenly in one quarter, we had to provide notional forex losses, you know, uh, for the uh, for our open imports. But against that, our export order, which we have already taken for two and a half to three months, they will be going at a much higher price in the June quarter. So part part of that will be offsetted in the uh, this September quarter, sorry, in the September quarter. And another thing, what had happened is that the power has gone up, power rates had gone up in the month of April. And you get all those numbers and bills and everything by, you know, mid-May mid or May. So uh, there, there was some level of rate variation in the power cost, uh, more than approximately around one and a half crore. And then uh, there was almost uh, six and a half crore variation in the rates of coal. Uh, so what happens is that many of the times, you know, when you negotiate contracts in shorter term, uh, it is always done based on what are the input costs, ma the main key intermediates, and accordingly, what should be the selling prices. But then slowly, when uh, this kind of coal prices becomes a new norm, then definitely those uh, gross contributions needs to be revised in the newer negotiation. So that will come, uh, that also will come back on track. Apart from that, around uh, we foresee that around approximately around two crores means uh, two or two and a half means around 0.5 percent of the uh, EBITDA margin we can recover by uh, reduction in uh, some cost means last quarter we had some exceptional one-time maintenance as well as USFDA remediation cost which also we have booked in last quarter so that will also be not there from the next quarter so, so what we feel is that 15 to 16 percent EBITDA margin, we should recover. It is just a matter of time. Means, uh, once the volatility stops in macro factors, then it should be back, back on track. What about the competition from China? Is it back to pre-COVID? Yeah, so competition from China. Okay. Uh, so so uh, the, the, the most, I mean, the stiffest competition from China was in the decade of 2001 to 2010. After that, from 2011 to 2020, what we had seen that we had become very competitive against China. Means I'm talking even before uh, pre-COVID levels. And then uh, towards the end of 2020 decade, the Chinese government had started implementing very, very strictly the, all the pollution norms and everything. So their OPEX has also gone up. Sometimes, sometimes there might be few cases where you know a particular raw material or a commodity is available cheaper in China. So they might get a benefit of that in few products, what we have seen. But apart from that, from the efficiency point of view and uh, the overall cost point of view and the process and the technology point of view, uh, we are very much competent with China. And uh, it's in the top 10 products, top 14 products what we manufacture. Uh, in that, in uh, around four, four or five products, we are even larger than uh, Chinese capacity.
Right, but in terms of pricing, because if you go back to the earlier era, right, 2001 to 2010, your margins were only at 10%. Correct, correct. And then we improved in the... Right, you only started getting to 15, 15% after 2030. So given that there's been this major reset after COVID, uh, what gives you the conviction that things won't go back to the old days? I know the pollution and all that, I, I take that point, but... Uh, the no, Chinese can always hold as in, uh, price, right? Even if it goes back to the, even if it goes back to the old days, uh, that is what we feel it will be around 15 to 16 percent. Pre-COVID, means in the COVID, actually the margins had gone up even beyond 20 percent. Right. Uh, and the, and the reason is because you think the Chinese have higher costs and they won't, you know, get into a pricing competition. Is that the reason, or? Yeah, we think that has been the trend. Right, but and uh, and you make a statement in your press release that uh, when you increase the API prices, uh, there was uh, some demand destruction. Uh, so what are these dealers waiting for? Lower API prices? Because at some point they do have to stock up, right? These are medicines and uh, I mean, it's not discretionary. Yes, uh, very, very, very true. And that is the reason why, uh, you know, we were at least uh, able to achieve some bit of sale at a very high prices. So for the players where, you know, they had a little bit higher inventories, they must have refrained. But the players where the, you know, the inventory was critically low, they had to make that purchase at the higher price. Is what we are answered. So if input prices don't come down, assuming they are at the same level, which is a very probable scenario, yeah. your margins will only be around this 11, 12% level. Is that right? No, no. If, if it gets stabilized at this price, uh, uh, this uh, these levels, then uh, slowly, your time, if they remain high for a year like this, it should again uh, move upwards. It, it should start going up because ultimately uh, all the businesses they, they look at return in longer term. So if you know a particular uh, com company is not able to make decent enough returns in this business, especially uh, API manufacturing is a AI oriented business, then uh, people start exiting. The competitors start exiting. That is what we have seen in the past. So you're saying if inputs Stabilize the higher level, the formulation guys would have no alternative but to purchase at higher prices. Uh, yes, and what will happen, you know, uh, as of today, uh, th there are uh, certain pricing caps on the finished formulations means at the customer at the end at the at the retail level. So even those will be revised by the government if such uh, cost pressures persist for a long time. All right. So if the margins aren't at 15, 16%, then your ROICs don't make sense. Is that correct? The CapEx that you're undergoing, the 600 crores, uh, it's not going to be commercially viable if you don't get that level of margin, correct? Uh, no, no. Uh, what we do internally, uh, we check whether the IRRs of the project uh, is beyond 18% or not for the project. Uh, for the new products what we are launching. And if they are, then we do. And whatever pro uh, products we have selected as of now, uh, they, they make a lot of sense as of now. On only thing is, see, uh, when we launch a particular product, uh, obviously, uh, the, uh, initially, in say for depending upon product to product, uh, you know, three to six months goes, you know, in optimizing the process whatever results we have achieved at the plant or sorry at the lab or the pilot level it takes some time uh, to achieve the similar kind of results at the very big commercial uh, batch level so that much time goes but then uh, ultimately we are very confident to achieve you know uh, good return on investment for the newer product okay thank you very much thank you Thank you. Next question is on the line of Anchal Kansal 
from Green Portfolio Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Am I audible? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, sir, in previous con call, you said that you have backed out from PLI scheme as you were able to complete the project in 20 crores, not meeting the government's capex requirement of 80 crores. But in recent investor presentation, PLI scheme is still mentioned. So I wanted to know if this both are linked in any way. Yes, yes. No, no, sorry. Uh, I, no, the thing is, uh, I think that is missed out, overlooked. We will correct that. Thank you for pointing okay. out. Uh, no worries, sir. So, uh, as we know, we have heard a lot about anti-China. In some industries, impact is already on ground. How is, it, how is it impacting the chemical sector? And I wanted to know how dependent are the China on raw materials for financial year 2022? Okay. Sorry, 2023. Uh, so, the thing is, that, yeah, so um, right now still, you know, approximately, uh, our import is like imports and indigenous purchase is like 50 50 and as i okay. said that around 50, around 15 to 18 percent of the raw materials are available only in china rest can be procured from rest of the world uh, so that risk is always there so we have developed technologies but right now we are not going ahead with the capex of those uh, that particular backward integration the newer projects okay. what we are launching few import substitutes also what we are launching uh, for that, okay. uh, for raw material of those, uh, we are not, we won't be dependent on China. So okay. overall, on an aggregate basis, our dependency should come down ideally. Okay. So uh, can you tell me the capacity utilization on an average give or take? And your revenue has decreased 11% quarter on quarter. How about a volume in the same period? Mm -hmm. So our volume has also decreased. Right, uh, this particular uh, in exports the volume has grown, but in domestic market the volume has gone down, and the main reason was very high prices, which you know we were trying to pitch uh, in the anti antibiotic category. There we saw a lot of uh, volume degrowth uh, for the first quarter because of the very high uh, price escalations. And so, are we under uh, under utilizing uh, utilizing the capacity? Yes, we are. We are. So, the, so we are the volume. So since the volumes are not rising and we have spare capacity, so what is the point of doing uh, capital expenditures? So see, uh, so, so volumes what we have now, the spare capacities what we have are for particular products, and okay. we typically eighty to ninety percent of our revenue comes from dedicated plants. And it is not, it, okay. is, it is just present in nature, means for one quarter. It is not that the overall market of that product has gone down all the way to go down. It should come back. Uh, that volume should come back. And plus, there is a lot of scope in further increase of market share as well. So okay. That scope is also there. So, one more question. So, a bit and part margins can be seen declining due to high other expenses. So can you please shed some light on the other expenses that you have incurred? Does this include one-time maintenance and US FDA reinspection costs that you just mentioned? Yeah, so other expenses will means that will also include all our manufacturing expenses. I think the the one uh, the format which you're looking at. So right, that uh, am I right? Uh, um, that includes manufacturing, right? There is no separate manufacturing expense in that. We are okay. looking at the say, what we published in the SEBI, right? Yes, yes. What you published in the yes. report yesterday. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. So, so yes, yes, I, I saw that. Uh, so that includes all the manufacturing expenses. One of the the most uh, important uh, variation what we have seen is in coal, around six and a half crore and around one and a half crore in power. That is only because of the rate variation year on year. I Means the con even if we keep the consumption same. Just because the increase in the rates of coal and increase in the rates of uh, power, I mean KWH unit, uh, that much cost have gone up, and rest okay. and with, and others uh, some other would be uh, means increments in the employee means uh, EB expenses and then uh, selling and distribution freight has gone up because of the increase in the crude since February, and uh, there are few expenses one-time expenses as well related to the USFDA remediation. 
and a few other expenses which 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 were in one one time in in some very old plants we had done some maintenance uh, which we expensed so okay sir thank you lot sir thank you next question is from the line of chirag tagli from tsp mutual fund please go ahead sir Yes, so thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, what is the volume growth in uh, Q1? No, this, uh, uh, so there is no volume growth. Thank you. Oh, no, uh, yeah, so there there is no volume growth in Q1. Only the export has in some uh, uh, very small lower two three percent kind of a volume growth. But uh, the mainly all the growth is because of the air rates what we have charged in Q1. and basically that uh, it was like either that or you achieve the volume growth and keep the rates low uh, those were the only two option yes. understood understood so volumes were flat for the quarter ha so uh, so but we expect it to grow because it cannot remain flat for you know longer period because then the inventories will go down sure uh, sure i understand uh, uh, what percentage of your revenue um, is long term contracts versus um, spot business or mo- is is it mostly spot uh, uh i will give you a brief summary and then i will ask harid bhai to answer that question but uh, in domestic market what happens uh, you can say i very roughly i'm saying 70 to 80% would be more of a short term i mean within one month or one one and half months delivery but in exports uh, deliveries are around means the pending orders are around uh, 2.7 to 3 months typically and also a uh, few of the customers they like to do longer term contracts as well in terms of supply of quantity that ranges anywhere between 6 to 12 months that also is there it is mainly observed in the case of bigger remittances they like to do longer term contracts but 80% of the domestic business which is two thirds of the business is one month uh, kind of uh, delivery so mostly spot kind of market for domestic understood understood okay um, other thing was sir uh, on this specialty chemical capex you indicated 250 odd crores roughly you are likely to have 600 odd crores kind of sales uh from this business uh question is how do you sell this who are the customers are these the same customers that you have for uh pharma um how you know what is the customer set how, how are you doing market seeding etc on the second yes for special right harit bhai would you like to answer that question yeah actually um, uh, most of the customer would be chemical companies or intermediate company at uh, this pharmaceutical companies and we have already selling some products to them so marketing would not be it, they won't be a new customer but some products uh, there will be a new customer specifically uh, for specialty chemical uh, products but normally if there be we are in touch with them for most of our other group company also is selling some product to them so in question of new customer won't be arise right. more or less same customers would be there you don't see a challenge basically in no market. no we don't see any challenge yeah and so one okay. product which we are planning to do is import substitute product so uh, they will be they are mostly they are imported from china so we will be replacing that uh, with indigenous products yeah understood sir and sir in terms of uh, new product launches that you've done in the last 2 3 years uh, on the api side um how has traction been there uh, are we sub optimal there uh, you know if you can just give some color of what uh, what part of our uh, you know uh, business today comes from new products launched in the last 2 3 years and what is the kind of traction that we are expecting so mainly uh, the new the new product launches were more on the uh, second side uh, where we have seen more traction in last couple of years uh, the apis which we have launched recently uh, that is yet to receive traction since right now i would say it is you can say almost break even or that kind of a thing because uh, scale up batches are going on so right now 
we haven't received any profit from those products you can safely assume that so how many are these what is the potential there the the market size is big means uh, it can go over to 500 crores uh, overall market potential uh, for this product but then uh, obviously we haven't put those high capacities yet we have only put the capacities for around say 80 to 100 crores kind of a turnover and once we get traction in that and so after after that we will be in fact uh, going for a maybe newer plant which much much higher capacity once we get success in with that level so that 80 to 100 crore potential has also not been reached sir no 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 so we are far from that so uh, we are still in the process of optimizing uh, uh, pro, pro means uh, the intermediates and doing more backward integration uh, getting some tolling done for uh, some intermediates so, so that we can reduce the cost and then we will go full fledged on the products understood and how many products are these how many apis are these so uh, ma- mainly uh, newer means in liftings we have two uh in spectrum uh, again one or two products uh, uh but o- obviously there are derivatives of chlorosulfonation chemistry only uh, also in chlorosulfonation lot of our earlier products which we used to make we had a long list of chlorosulfonation products but many of them were like so they are there but meaningfully it was not there so we are hoping to increase the market of that uh so it will be like as good as a new product in terms of increase you know in the scale up so there also we are focusing on so but that is on the specialty chemical right correct correct no i'm saying on the api side, APIs, uh, right? there are two gliptins that you talked about what else correct and there are few fungal products which we are uh, uh means we have done piloting of that but uh Uh, as of now they are not contributing anything on the bottom line understood okay sir thank you so much thank you next question is from the line of gagan tareja from ask investment managers please go ahead hello uh, am i audible yes yes good morning uh, sir my first question is on the tax rate uh, why is the tax rate for the quarter higher uh, compared to 1q of last year year on year and i think even sequentially i think that is more to do with the deferred tax otherwise it remains same because we have gone for that uh, that uh, 22 point something plus plus tax taxation so we have gone, opted for that so fully what should be the tax rate for you then ideally uh, around 25% is what we expect okay okay and uh, what has been the reason for the formulation sales not growing in this quarter they have actually dropped 2% year on year uh, yeah. uh, so so the though the formulation sales did not grow but then uh, uh, the profitability was very very good i think vishwa is on the call so he will answer your this question yeah 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 so basically uh, uh, last quarter last year same quarter sales were higher because of some uh, um, you know more of domestic tender execution uh, especially some of the um, uh, uh, covid related products were also in higher sale at that time um, however it has been our constant focus to shift um, uh, from the domestic to more value added sales um, and uh, due to that uh, although there is not a high growth there is not a growth in um, uh, revenues but there is a substantial growth in profitability okay uh, but how should we then think of uh, formulation sales from uh, a full year perspective for fy23 and going ahead both in terms of growth and in terms of margins in in in, in uh, current financial year our uh, focus is to grow more in profitability and grow export sales um, so uh, our sales expectations for the remaining quarters are more or less in line with our current quarter sales um, but at the same time we have a capex project going on 
uh, which is uh, uh, in the final stages and uh, due to be completed in, in the next one quarter and which will start adding revenues from the next financial year. Uh, so uh, 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 that uh, the, that block will uh, the new block will start to, uh, you know add up capacities for us and uh, start contributing revenues from next financial year. How much capacity will that effectively add for you? Uh, basically, it's a new line. Uh, the, uh, right now, we are into general uh, oral solids. This is uh, uh, a dedicated facility for uh, oncology. Uh, so, in terms of the number of units, it will be lower since it's um, more of a high-value product. But uh, uh, our uh, uh, ultimate expectation in the next once it starts in the next uh, in in about one and a half to two years is to reach revenues of about uh, 200 to 250 crores from from the new facility. So 200 to 250 crores additional sales from the new Onco line. Yeah, at at uh, at uh, full potential we can reach. Yeah. And and it will take two two to two and a half years for you to do that. Correct. Right. And when you say your margins have improved in formulations, you know, if you could give us some idea of how much they have improved year on year for you. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so in 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 this quarter, we've achieved a, a, a profit before tax of uh, about twelve crores. Uh, and uh, in terms of uh, margins, it's about at about yeah. fourteen fifteen percent. Uh, and uh, we we expect to kind of yeah uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I will answer that. The margins, means the EBITDA margins uh, year on year has grown from 6.7 percent to now 15 EBITDA uh, in this particular quarter, and and the PBT margins have also gone up from uh, around 5.8 percent to around 14 percent, one fourth. Uh, okay. for the, uh, so, and it is mainly on the accounts of uh, higher export sales. As Vishwa said, that we are focusing more on profitability now and the export uh, sales than the earlier. We used to do a lot of toll manufacturing sales, which has much lower profitability. Okay, so you've discontinued with toll manufacturing and you actually emphasized more on uh, export sales. So, if you could give us some idea of the sales mix, you know. Uh, this quarter, how much was exports uh, as a proportion of total formulation sales versus last year, and also uh, for toll manufacturing, how for, uh, how much was it as a proportion of uh, formulation sales compared to last year? So this year we have made a yeah yeah we sure. oh, yeah, this, uh, yeah yeah. So we have not discontinued uh, uh, the contract manufacturing or toll manufacturing sales. It's just that we are slowly trying to reduce that in favor of higher capacity utilization for exports. Uh, so current quarter would be uh, uh, roughly about 50% of our uh, uh, revenues would be from uh, uh, from exports, and also there are uh, slightly higher, uh, uh, about five seven percent more in uh, indirect exports uh, as well. Okay, and and with the onco line, would would margins have potential to grow further still, because of uh, you know it being a, maybe a higher realization product uh, versus the plain vanilla whites. Yeah, we would expect it to uh, to have a higher margins, and since that would be more concentrated on regulated markets. Uh, however, as as uh, you know, currently the scenario in regulated markets is also uh, there is a lot of margin pressure. Uh, so while we would expect it to be better, but uh, 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 but there is also significant competition in in oncology uh, uh, in, in in those markets. Okay, and uh, uh, the next question is is around you know the capacity expansion that that you're planning. Uh, what's uh, what's the fixed cost associated with you know with the new facilities, greenfield and brownfield that will come up? And what will be the you know break-even utilization for you in in these capexes? So you are asking about deformulation facility, yeah? Not not formulation. I'm I mean I'm looking at at your uh, capital investment plans in aggregate. Uh, you know the Tarapur facility and the Gujarat facility. Uh, as and when they come on stream, uh, what's the additional fixed cost and at what utilization do you break even? Yeah, typically. Uh, you know the addition of fixed costs. Uh, <coughs> once the facility is to use, 
then it will start coming into our financials. Uh, more or less, uh, you know, what, whatever we have uh, right now, you know, uh, in terms of percentages, more or less it won't be impacted much, uh, frankly speaking, uh, with the addition of new capital. It, it, will be, it will be more or less in line in terms of percentage to sales. So that impact won't be that high. Right, and what would be the break-even uh, point for for uh, in terms of utilization for these capacities? Uh, is, probably, uh, we feel that within one year's time, we should be able to break even. Okay. Uh, uh, the uh, the utilization will go up, and uh, on month to month, this should be in profit. Okay, so you're saying uh, at at one year's time post commissioning. Uh, you know, you you can see uh, these capacities sort of contributing to profit. And, okay. and uh, you mentioned that, you know, the, the stringency of the Chinese government regulations on environment standards has, has increased. Uh, I would then, you know, infer that a certain amount of input cost inflation uh, coming from China is actually sustainable in nature and has nothing to do with, you know, the geopolitics or the COVID or the supply chain issues. It would simply be higher because the operating cost for uh, your suppliers based out of China would have actually gone up. If you could, therefore, you know, sort of delineate as to as to how much cost inflation is is coming from from this factor and 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 therefore is there for you know to stay for the future and and how much can uh, sort of soften because of uh, uh, you know the transitory uh, impact of some of these issues related to COVID and and, and supply chain and so on. Yeah, uh, uh, Harit, I would like to answer this the on the raw material side. Uh, what has happened in China over the years uh, that chemical sector government is giving uh, low priority now <laughs> due to environmental issue. And many industrial parts uh, which were in near the cities have been asked to move to remote places and plus environmental norms have become more stringent. So there, oh, and plus in addition to that, the uh, labor cost also in China is uh, very high compared to vis-a-vis -vis to India now. So over the scenario, if you are efficiently producing any product, uh, we can always compete China. That is our philosophy. We feel that we can always compete China, basically. No, no, my, my question is that your procurement cost of the inputs coming from China, yeah, not, yeah. Not, not your competency versus the Chinese suppliers. I'm saying since okay. you rely very heavily on Chinese vendors to for, for your inputs, uh, and some of those input costs would have, you know, gone up simply because the operating costs of your vendors based out of China would have gone up on a sustainable and permanent basis, Correct. Uh, which you therefore need to pass on to protect your margin, right? Some of the other input cost inflation is, you know, related to a sharp up move uh, due to supply chain disruption caused by COVID and, and some coming from the sharp gas price movement and so on. So I'm simply trying to pass the uh, or separate out, you know, the impact between these two elements because one is uh, sustainable uh, going ahead and one is, you know, sort of something that can normalize. Uh, yeah. and, and therefore trying to understand how much of the input, input cost inflation is actually now permanently set in the base and how much can can go away. It depends on the product to product it differs basically, but uh... Uh, 10 to 15 percent pre COVID level, uh, the cost uh, uh, have gone up. Uh, that will be sustainable for future, you know. Uh, that will that will be the permanent cost gone up, you know, basically. Because many yeah. small producers have uh, stopped producing in China, so there are low, less producers for uh, particular products, you know. Okay. So, okay. yeah. And have you seen the prices of intermediates and key starting materials soften over the last month or two for you? Not from China, but from domestically, yes. Uh, some due to uh, uh, higher power cost, uh, this uh, commodity price. Some chemical, basic chemicals like nitric acid, ammonia, caustic soda, etc., <laughs> which is very commonly used in all our APIs and chemicals, uh, started softening now. 
Yeah, basically. Bulk chemicals, I understand of software. I am I am sort yeah. of looking more for key Inter- starting materials. Uh, yeah, intermediate uh, price also little bit stock. Yes, yes. Okay. So final question from my side. I mean, you you uh, in in the in the products you know that you supply. Uh, uh, you you said that uh, uh, you have una- you have not been able to pass on the. the input price increase uh, having tried to do so you've lost out on volumes uh, i i mean if if that is the case i am simply trying to understand is is the supply uh, or the capacity for supply for these products in the market well in excess of the demand uh, you know and therefore even even uh, a very large and very comp- cost competitive supplier like you has not been able to pass on uh, yeah. How partly how partly true but uh, what has also happened is uh, last quarter uh, our sales were very high and uh, all the uh, formulation companies uh, started believing that this whatever growth was there in last two years will sustain so they have uh, formulation uh, all distributor level everything their forecast was very high and they produce more in last quarter basically so now more of for uh, deep talking is happening than they uh, happening in, in this quarter basically so uh, so was, sales major, was not a sustainable money. sales yeah it it was basically a lot of channel channel inventory being replenished i will i will answer that question see what happened is uh, we are able to pass on uh, increased prices and that is why the, you know at least uh, you can say uh, more than 90% of the customers have procured at that high level maybe 10% or sub customers have refrained from purchasing at that higher level probably because they might be the ones to have the better inventories uh, in the last quarter so they were able to refrain that purchase per, uh, rather postpone that purchasing decision but if uh, if it persists for longer period then even they will have to start buying at uh, such high levels so my more or less uh, this impact is more in short term nature than long term you know, my 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 uh, you know dilemma is that uh, for for the last so many quarters uh, it has been difficult not only for you but for the entire sort of api industry to to pass on uh, the input input inflation in in commensurate measure in output prices to formulation companies this can happen only you know in the case where alternate supplies are available to formulation companies at lower prices otherwise i i fail to understand why you know this has been the case even even intermediate uh, com- suppliers have managed to protect margin better than api suppliers so i am simply trying to understand what has been the underlying reason for this you you are at least in three or four molecules you are the largest supplier globally let alone in india and even then you know it has been very hard for you to uh, to pass uh, input inflation in in full measure or anywhere close to full measure so uh, what else explains that is the uh, what i can make make out of it is only one thing that the last <coughs> one year you know the last last five quarters prices have gone up uh, to to a large extent if we take uh, current current quarter selling prices uh, with respect to you can say last last quarter's purchase prices then the margins will look fantastic but uh, right now it is not looking because again the escalation had happened at the input prices means in the month of uh, february till is, april May. is it the uh, is it the case that the product like i i get that but is it also a case that you know in the products that you supply uh, at least for the domestic mo- market most of them are under price control and therefore you know the formulation uh, companies give you push back uh, uh, in, in and resist you know input inflation being passed on because they themselves can't pass it on and so they are under dpco definitely that they definitely that happens and they get escalations every year no so yeah. based on inflation so if this yeah. kind of scenario persists then definitely there will be more escalations in the final prices yeah but dpco now has given a 10% 10 this year has been given they've been given a 10.7% uh, sort of a then but they work on last 12 months data na? so there is they also have a lot of lag in terms of uh, okay but and obviously they will also want to be conservative in increasing prices so if it persists like this then definitely they will have to look at it.
Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot for taking my question. I'll get back in with you. Okay. Thank you. Due to time constraints, we have reached the end of question and answer session.